begins. Hamlet Sr. is murdered by his very own brother, Claudius. And his ghost comes back at the end of Act One and tells his son, Hamlet, that he must revenge his foul and most unnatural murder. And Hamlet says, I'm your guy. But four entire acts pass, and the pile of dead bodies keeps getting bigger before Hamlet actually does get that revenge. And the question that critics have been asking forever is, why the delay? <laughs> now every time I look at this picture, I think, well, no kidding, he's got terrible shoes, he can't run. <laughs> <laughs> but this is ultimately the question that we asked our grade 12 students after their day. Why the delay? Why does it take him so long? And I thought that the biggest dilemma would be that the students would either say, okay, what's my personal opinion? And how does this match with the ideas we put there? Or, okay, what are the main ideas? And how can I build an argument to support that? Now, in order to help our students and to facilitate this thinking, we actually gave them the four most popular theories put forth by critics. And we actually outlined the whole entire argument we provided the source material, and we actually even included the page references. And then we went to the lab to start our research. And the very first thing the majority of my students did was this. They Googled <laughs> the questions, why is Hamlet delayed? Okay. Now I'd like to draw your attention to one piece of information on the slide. It comes back with one 1.5 million results. <laughs> the students had exponentially exploded four topics into 1.5 million possibilities. Now, luckily, our students are very smart. And they quickly realized by looking even through the first six results that generated like 50 different ideas, that none of those ideas came with sources. And so they immediately came back and said, okay, you laid out a path. And it wasn't meant to stifle their creativity, right? But it was just to help them get those parameters. And so it started me thinking about why our students, when given an essay task, delay, right? So <laughs> Hamlet, if Hamlet is a high school student, and the ego Claudius is the essay, why do students delay? And the big answer, which is really the big answer to everything nowadays, is technology. They delay because of technology. <laughs> you see, technology has become our temple. It's where we do our social networking. It's how we answer the phone. It's our movie theater. And now, apparently, according to a 2012 Cisco survey, it's our nightlight. In their survey, they asked adults 18 to 30 okay, how they use their smartphones. And 75% of respondents said that they sleep with it, okay, with it in reach while they are sleeping. Okay? And this isn't even applicable to how they use it in the English classroom, which is access to information. And the internet is available to our students now. Okay. The digital natives, our students, right? You guys realize this, that traditional media, traditional technology is finite. When you finish your book, you close, you can't click to another book. And you've also unfortunately realized that the teachers that used to be up on the pedestal are also containers of finite knowledge. But you realize that the internet is infinite. And so it stands to reason, if you have an infinite resource, that somewhere out there is the correct answer. But it's not teaching our kids to ask the question, what is the correct question? And the number one reason why students come to my office is to say, I have a problem with my topic. I don't know exactly how to shape my ideas. And I say, okay, well tell me, play it on me. Tell me what your tentative thesis is. And you guys come up with these 
amazing ideas. And I think, oh, I wish I'd thought of that. So we come up with these amazing ideas, and I'm like, that's great. So what's the problem? Well, the problem is always one of two things. The problem is either my idea is great, but no one out there in the digital world thinks so. So therefore, it has no merit. Or, well, everyone out there thinks this. And therefore, I'm no longer original. And the problem is that most of our students decide, instead of taking that risk, instead of going on their own path, that they will just follow the masses. This is what universities think of that. They're saying that our students aren't writing their own ideas, and they're not responding to questions in a fresh and original way. So, how do we make our students come up with those fresh and original ideas? And more importantly, how do we get them to stick to those ideas? <laughs> <laughs> and we step away from the computer. I'm not talking about forever. But I'm talking in that initial phase of idea generation. Right? We have to step away. Now, no one knows this better than Hamlet. You see, when Hamlet has those big ideas, right, the ideas about the role that religion plays um, in our moral decisions, he's not standing around the old water bucket talking to Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. He's off in a recess somewhere, reflecting, contemplating, thinking on his own. to thine own self. 